Hey all you cool cats and kittens. I'm Sarah. I'm one half of Bottle Stiplers and this is Bottle Stiplers Play Kitchen where we teach you how to cook, make ingredients out of, wait, make food out of ingredients, right? Yeah, make food out of ingredients. Um, I know some of you guys have never cooked before because you just got thrown out of a dorm or you've been eating out, um, you know, for every meal because you live in New York City. Evidently people do that in New York City. I don't know. Um, and now you're desperate and you're looking to learn how to cook. Or, you know, your whole life you just like cook things that are convenience foods that come in boxes and you want to learn how to make things from scratch. Or, all of a sudden you lost your job, $1,200 is not that much fucking money, and your grocery bill just got slashed to nothing. So, if you're any of those people, I can help you learn how to cook some stuff. <coughs> Today, what we're going to do is learn how to cook a really simple tomato sauce. Um, it's Marcella Hazan's tomato sauce, and she's a very influential cookbook author and food writer. Um, she kind of introduced America to traditional Italian cuisine back in like the 70s especially. Um, and this is an incredibly simple pasta sauce. Like stupid simple. This is going to be a short ass video because there's not much to talk about. It's got exactly like, well, I guess it's got four ingredients because it's got peeled uh, tomatoes in a can, onion, a ton of butter, and salt. And that's literally all that's in it. So. Um, you do need, this is a 28 ounce can, so it's like the big can of tomatoes. Um, you do need to start out with actual, like the, the whole peeled tomatoes. As usual, uh, the, the less it's been processed, the cheaper they are. People will tell you that you need like the fancy Italian ones. Those are nice, or the Muir Glen ones are also nice, but it's completely fine. Like you can get Hunt's, you can get Publix brand, nobody will make fun of you. Um, diced tomatoes are actually treated to make them hold their, their shape better, which is fine in some instances, and I use them, like, you know, when it doesn't matter, but if you want them to actually cook down, you're going to need to not use the diced tomatoes, use crushed tomatoes, or the easiest thing is to use these, they're very versatile because of the whole tomato, it's just in their own juice. Um, no salt added, it should just say tomatoes, with maybe, like, um, some preservative things on the ingredients list. This actually says, vine ripened tomatoes, tomato juice. Um, less than 2% of calcium chloride, citric acid. That's fine. The recipe has you do um, one small onion. These onions are from Costco. I don't understand why the onions are enormous from Costco. It's not like you get like a benefit from that, but they are, so we're just going to do half an onion. They're a real purist with this recipe. They get really intense about it, and um, theoretically in the recipe you get shuck the onion in and then you take it out at the end. You can do that. I'm not gonna, you know, stop you. That's actually what the recipe says. But I actually like to um, to cut it a little bit, like maybe into in this giant onion into ace, because I just think that the onion bits are really good um, once they've been cooking in all this butter for a while. And when I chuck it in, I'll kind of separate them a little bit. But that's personal preference. And then you're gonna need a shit ton of butter. You're gonna have to decide if you're in it for a long time or a good time. And you're looking at me and you're like, yeah, obviously you decided. No, I did not get fat from eating butter. I got fat from liking beer and hating exercise. This will make you fat. This will just be delicious. Um, so, butter, it's, it seems like a relatively expensive ingredient if you're like really cut to the bone. Um, it often goes on sale though, and butter freezes really well. So you can buy as much butter like when it's super cheap as you want to or get it from Costco. Um, don't just throw it in the freezer in its little paper wrappers and the, the cardboard box. like. Just put all that into a Ziploc bag and shuck that in the freezer. Um, and you can even chop off bits of it right out of the freezer. So um, freeze your butter and you'll always have it. I don't have to go looking for it now because I have it in the freezer. So what we're going to do, um, I have an assistant. Uh, and I had to get an assistant because this is the only way we can get my son to cut his fingernails. So go ahead, Edgar. Say hi. Hi. Hop up. Hop up on your stool. And what we do... People will tell you that you can um, uh, chop up these tomatoes. You're going to need to squish them. Um, you can stick in like your kitchen shears and cut them that way, but why would you get your kitchen shears dirty when you can get out all of your crushing this way? So Edgar's going to help me. What you're going to do is you're going to grab these guys. You might want to come in because we've got to keep them down here so they don't splurt all over the place and just squish them. Ah, see, it squished a little bit. That's okay. It can be a little messy. It's all right. Edgar, you try. Squish it. Pretend like it's a man who said we can sacrifice people for money. Yeah. There. Oop. <laughs> and we'll wipe it up. It's fine. So just get in there. Squish them down. Until it just kind of seems kind of soupy. I'm going to be doing these on this side. All right. 
<laughs> they make funny noises. That's fun too. Pretend like the Secret Service didn't hear that. All right, last one. Squish it. <laughs> All right. And so you can go wash your hands, buddy. Thank you, Edgar, for your contributions to this particular mirror. So, if you see what it kind of looks like when it's done, this will look like, there's some pieces of tomato, that's completely fine. It doesn't have to be smooth in any way. I'm just going to rinse my hands off. And then, literally, what we do, you chunk your butter in. Boom. You put your onions in. And you're going to start it off with a little bit of salt, like maybe... This is probably like a teaspoon of salt. You might need more, you might need less. Um, tomatoes are an agricultural product. They're not absolutely, you know, always gonna be exactly the same. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna cook this with no lid on for 45 minutes. About halfway through, maybe taste it. So we're gonna taste it and see if it needs more salt. Now remember, salt does not make things taste salty. I mean, it does, but the first thing that it does is taste, make things taste more like themselves. Mm -hmm. So you can't just not have salt, all right? Even if you are, unless you have like a serious, like you know if your doctor says zero salt. Even if you're just doing a little bit of salt, at least start off with that much salt and then we're gonna taste it. So what we're gonna do, um, for those of you who don't know anything about cooking, we're gonna simmer it for 45 minutes. What that means is, first we're gonna bring it to a boil, which is where you see bubbles popping up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll show you, oh, he's, he's, I, I love my hype man, it's great. Um, we're going to show you what that looks like, and then you cut it down immediately to a simmer. A simmer means you see a little bubble popping up every so very often, okay? So we don't want that really, really vigorous boil. We just want like a little bit of simmering. Um, the pure recipe has no seasoning. I won't like yell at you if you decide to put a little bit in. It might be nice to put a little bit of um, cayenne pepper, a little chipotle pepper, give it a little uh, spice to it. Um, People will put in basil, oregano, that's all completely fine. Although, honestly, try it without it because it is a very, like, it's very nice, rich tasting tomato sauce on its own. So we're going to check in back in with it after it's been, um, after it comes to a boil. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's in a simmer. All right, so this is kind of a more reasonable simmer. It is not the um, softest simmer that you can get. You can actually get it very low so that it, um, you see, like, the occasional little bubble. This is not a super delicate recipe, so you don't have to worry about doing this, um, but it will stay at the simmer for a long time. Like it, it's not gonna go below that or above that. My stove happens to have a simmer burner, which is really convenient for this kind of thing. Um, for the res if you don't have that, I mean, your stove will absolutely simmer things. You just have to maybe uh, dial it in kind of quick. If you're getting no motion, put it up a little bit. If you're getting like the kind of boiling that we were having before, take it down a little bit. And this is a good recipe to try that out on because you cannot really fuck this up too hard. Um, unless you, I guess like if you boil it entirely dry, then you can start a fire. Um, so don't like, uh, you know, get super drunk after you do this and forget that you have a pot on the stove. That would be a bad idea. Um, but otherwise, generally, this is a pretty foolproof recipe. So you can practice if you, uh, you know, are really not sure what on your stove it means simmer. Um, try it with this. So what we're going to do is now we're going to start the timer for 45 minutes. And we will check back in with this when it is done. So it just occurred to me that if um, you don't know how to cook at all, you might not feel very confident just following the instructions on the back of a pack of pasta. So uh, let me help. Uh, we've got, you can see, we've got about 12 minutes left on our sauce. We can, it can go a little longer, not a big deal. What I'm going to do is just cook whatever pasta I've got. I happen to have some, um, like, refrigerated stuffed tortellini. I don't usually have that laying around the house. Um, you know, I, I would have done spaghetti. Anything really except for a little tiny pasta would go well with this. Like, you don't want to do, like, orzo or ditalini or something. But you could do spaghetti. You could do, like, rotini. Um little macaroni, anything that you like, anything you happen to have, because at this point, there is very little pasta left in the shelves. So, if you don't know how to make pasta, here's how you do it. You get a, um, you get a, a pot. You put water in the pot. You're going to want to put some um, salt in the water, because this is your opportunity to season that. Some people will say, like, make it taste like seawater. That's actually a lot of salt. So, we'll just give it, like, you know, 
a reasonable lot of salt. Um, we let it boil. So uh, for this, we want like a good rolling boil, like we kind of saw before. We want lots of bubbles. We want the bubbles to be moving pretty hard. Um, once it does that, then you follow the instructions on the box. So if it says boil for nine minutes, you put it in once it's boiling, and that's when you start counting your nine minutes, okay? Um, and you're gonna, you know, keep it on high through that through that time period. When it's done, you drain it and you're ready. So just in case you weren't sure how that worked, now you know. I'm not gonna actually show you how it works because it'll look different for you know whatever your pasta choices are. Um, but I didn't want you to feel left out like you were with me until then you're stuck with this box by yourself. If you have any questions? Just let me know. Next time you see me, we will have the whole thing put together. Okay, so we're done. Um, Again, like I said, these are just little pre-made um, tortellini guys that I happen to have. Normally, I would have done maybe some spaghetti or some rotini or something like that. Um, and my tomatoes turned out to be kind of watery. That's fine. I actually cooked them a little bit longer. They still look like that. They taste delicious. Don't worry about it. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to garnish it. No, not garnish it. Garnish is for things that taste uh, to look good. This tastes good. I'm going to throw a little bit of that Parmesan on that we used in the last episode. You don't need that. It's just nice. And you're ready to go. Um, you can use this in place of any of the um, pasta sauces you would buy pre-made. Like you could use it if you wanted to make a um, eggplant parmesan or you know you don't just have to throw it on top of pasta. You can use it in recipes also. Uh, it's super simple, cannot be easier and if you don't think you can make something from scratch try this first because you can totally make this from scratch. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, next time we're gonna be doing no knead bread. That's knead with a K not like knead I don't need that because obviously you do need it. Um, if you like this and you're interested in what else we do, um, bodicetipplers.com or check out the rest of our YouTube channel. Um, and I will check you out when we go for a no-need bread.